All right, I just got home from work. Maybe I should stop recording on my phone because my photography roommate is here. <laughs> Bro, don't know he on, he on candid camera right now. Maybe I should stop recording on my phone because my photography roommate is here. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this quality. Look at this. Are you what are you recording right now? Uh, I was just recording some B-roll. Oh. Well, you want to record my intro? This is weird. I've never had anyone record an intro before, <laughs> but uh, there's been a drastic change in quality as I'm sure is visible now. Road is cracked. I used it as an opportunity to upgrade instead of just maintenance. Um, so what we're doing on the car today is uh, the 370D Nismo brake upgrade. So it's the Akebona calipers. Instead of little single piston calipers, it's four pistons on the front and two in the rear, as well as the uh, handbrake's gonna switch to Akebono. We're gonna see, it might be too hard to pull. We might have to do some adjustments on the mount uh, for the Hydro, but we'll see how it goes. You guys want to see a video of me getting tased? Yeah. <laughs> with a, a dry stun with a stun gun. Uh, it's up. It's cool. You ready? Oh no. Whoa! It does feel like a big ass bruise. It literally felt like someone like was just repeatedly punching you in the arm. And then when we finished, we could smell my shirt burning. Nice. This is acting. Yo, we got the we got the full cinema rig on right now, bro. <laughs> wait, wait, I gotta show you. All right, all right. Got the goddamn. <laughs> Oh, what? Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Our cameraman just pulled a three out. Do a backflip. No, what? I'm here for moral support, even though I'm leaving in two minutes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> zoom effect. Oh, where you zoom out? <laughs> this one's worse. Oh, you have the thing? So, no, I have an actual, here, look. This might be why. Here, do you want these? Actually, you can buy them off me. I don't need them, I have new calipers. <laughs> what he said. Should look like this. See uh -huh. the friction right, right, material? Me, hold it up again, hold it the, up. See the, yeah. see the friction material? Yeah. All that stuff on top, that's what stops. Makes the car stop. Makes the car stop. <laughs> There's no <laughs> friction material. Dude, I checked the wrong side. I was checking the right side. That was like when we did the Accord. The what, uh, what? I was what, only checking what, the right side. What, what rotor cracked? That, this one. I wonder why. Yeah. <laughs> I break you, that weird guys. Guys, when I break my, 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 it vibrates. Shut the f up. <laughs> oh, I get brake fade in the mountains. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. To what? Your pass. I gotta justify myself though because I checked the right side and it was fine. I probably had like five or six 30 seconds left. Or five millimeters, not 30 seconds. That's tires. That's tires. Um, so I thought I was fine. I didn't check this side. <laughs> this is why you check both sides. Yeah. 
PSA. I don't check this both sides at work. Do you check both sides at work? Yes, sir. I don't. P PSA. We're not putting that in the, the film. <laughs> you want to know why you check both sides? Because one caliper can have a seized piston, and that'll happen. Where one caliper has no brakes left, and the other one has a lot of brakes left because of a seized piston. Your brakes can seize. I wonder if that's what happened. We'll see the other side when I take those off, but yeah, pretty crazy. There you go. The more you know. <laughs> I got brake fluid. You want to lick it? I know you love eating that. For all you people that want to run the dual caliper setup, I ran the weld on. Do not get, do not get the it weld on. It snapped off. My caliper fell off my car and dragged it for like half a mile. Don't do that. Um, it just goes straight onto the hub. It sandwiches in it. It has a really good secure point for this to make. I think FDF makes it. FDF's a really good brand. Also, make sure to run your T-piece inside your car. Oh yeah. Not on the bottom of it. So I originally had it mounted at the diff <laughs> and it was impossible to believe. I could not get the air out. Yeah. Things you learn building a race car. Ooh, I can concur. So there's the problem child. <laughs> and you can also tell by the way this is all worn out that a pad was worn out. So can I see um, it when you're done? I wanna go do something with it. What are you gonna do? Throw it. This is giving me flashbacks to when I did his uh, radiator and everything, when I was just throwing oh, yeah. it. <laughs> this is your thing. Hell yeah. Oh. Would not focus on that. Aw. Broken part. <laughs> That's like the number one thing. People ask me about this car is how how, how big is that spacer, bro? Someone thought I was stacking spacers. Even the guy I bought the brakes from in Morgan Hill was like, that was the first thing he noticed too. Oops, drop my nuts. Hub centric, bolted in. Nothing's going anywhere. That's falling off. You did that so fast for me to try to focus on. Oh, sweet. <gasps> See, like right here. <laughs> <laughs> to everyone that's giving me a bunch of crap for running a spacer this big, 75 mil, 10 and a half inch wheel. It's still tucked. So to everyone who hates this so much, you can buy me some three piece wheels. Because that's the only way we will not run this. I need a negative 53 offset. So if you can find a wheel in that price range, send it to me. Instagram, right here, send it to me. <laughs> Instagram, right on him. So here's the, uh, the hot box talking about. See, it literally just sandwiches in between the that thing and this thing. <laughs> FDF, good brand. Please sponsor me. This is also a more aggressive compound too, so it should help with braking power. But I've never assembled that before. Oh god! I just pull the pin out. I will, I will, I will help momentarily, and then I will, I will disappear, and you will never know I was here. I've never done this. Before. Okay, here I Also, oh, I want to point this out real quick. Oh. See this cut well, brake uh, line? Maybe don't expose the Alibaba <laughs> market. Uh, we went to Oakland, okay. which is an interesting place. People know if, what Oakland. People, no, not everyone. People that yeah, aren't in yeah. California don't know Oakland. Maybe do. No, they do. They should. People, everyone in California. So you were in Oakland. We were in Oakland, Oakland. in the ghetto, and we <laughs> bought these brake lines. These these nice looking calipers with cut brake lines. So these might be stolen. <laughs> so was ever uh, G37 S? He did off it. Of, I'm sorry. It, uh, don't come after me because I just bought them. I, I stole them. We're supposed to tell them that. Dude. Hello. We good? Yeah. So for most fixed brake applications, it's two slide pins that go across that hold a spring that hold the uh, brake pads in place. So all you have to do is get something in here, pull these pins out. There's one. There's two. Once those pins are out, you can hit the slide pin from the other side. Like that. And then you just gotta get it out. It's a little tricky because it is a spring. And these are pretty rusted. So make sure to hit these with the grinder or like a wire brush and clean these up. Pull them both out. Spring pops out like that. The pads fold in on each other like that. And they just slide out through the top. Just like that. And then to compress 
these because you can't really get like anything in there to do it. What you can do is, it's easier on the car, but you take an old pad, put it up against the piston, you get your something to pry with, and you close it yourself. Like that, there's one side fully compressed, and there is now brake fluid on my pants. Womp womp. Guys. You pissed a little. I pissed myself. <laughs> I peed. Same thing for the other side. Take the old pad, put it up against there, get something to pry it open with, and just mark off the piss. Okay. So that is how you do. Um... Bro, we have a bathroom in the house. Come on. It smells so bad. <laughs> versus the guys who tells you not to worry about. So these inky dinky little rotors, they look so small, especially with 19s on. Like actually you can kind of see how tiny this filled this whole wheel well as well as running the rear. It's gonna feel a lot nicer now with this huge rotor. And then this is just the rear. The fronts are even bigger from what I remember, right? Can you see that? That's gonna look pretty yeah, sick. That is. We'll do some thorough testing, but... You mean you're gonna drive down the street and slam on the brakes and... Yeah, and if I stop, I stop. If I don't stop, it didn't work. Well, well. Um, so, one important thing, when you're installing the calipers, make sure that the bleeder valve is facing up, otherwise it's gonna be impossible to bleed your brakes because it's just gonna be dumping fluid down whenever you're bleeding it, so... Yeah. Also, if you're running a dual caliper setup like me, if you upgrade your regular caliper size, it's gonna increase the size of your rotor. This won't fit back on as a caliper. So that's why I had to get two Akibonos. All right, Caleb's not here to film this, but um, I kind of just wanted to show where I'm at right now with the brakes. I've made this contraption, first of all, which is very safe and OSHA approved. Using this just kind of to paint the calipers. So I put everything together on the left side. Uh, let's just kind of see how it goes. Went pretty smooth. I'm going to show you right now on the other side a little bit more of a detailed explanation. So far, I'm really happy with the choice of yellow. I think this really pops with the color of the car. Now on to the other side. When you take your caliper off, just make sure to secure it so it doesn't rest on the brake line. So then you take off the actual brake line itself right here. On the back of the caliper, you can see there's 12 or 14. Then you have your um, adapter bracket. I bought mine from CZP and it just sits right in place right there. Then you get the longest bolt that they give you with this weird shaped spacer thing. You get your locking washer, you put it on the bolt, then this on top. Now what this does is it helps the caliper to sit in place, giving it kind of a resting point. So you're gonna thread this in and then set your new caliper on and then adjust where it should be. So once you have this threaded in most of the way and we can still turn it, you just line this caliper up and bolt it in. Then once you have this all lined up, it should look something like this. You'll have your bolt here. Your two copper bolts, you don't need to thread them in all the way, just kind of just to get an idea of where this will end up. And then the shortest bolt goes right in here. And I like to bolt this in too, just so I can, you know, be sure that everything is solid. You tighten this down while the caliper is still on here, because this will spin if you're tightening it when it's not here. Tighten this down as much as you can. Um, you could also use some blue Loctite, and then uh, blue Loctite on this one as well. I wouldn't say you need to use Loctite on the caliper bolts, it's up to you really. Nathan's here now too. He's gonna help me bleed it because Tyler's girlfriend's here now. So Tyler's not gonna help me bleed it. So I also forgot to mention you need to cut a little bit of the dust shield off just to make clearance for the caliper. because It's gonna be sitting right here. The threads were messed up on the handbrake caliper. So we're just running the regular foot brake for now. So no dual caliper for right now. The interesting thing with this car is when you're bleeding it, you have to have the car running. Which is gonna be interesting. because we're gonna have to yell at each other <laughs> when we're bleeding these. All right, so instead of just making you listen to my really loud exhaust and me and Nathan yelling at each other, I figured I'd explain the process of bleeding brakes. So what I'm doing right now is opening and closing the bleeder valves. For bigger brakes like this, there's going to be an inside and an outside bleeder valve. You want to bleed the outside one first and then the inside one. By bleeding, you just have the person inside pump the brakes and then hold it. Then you open the bleeder valve while they're still holding it and you close it. And then I was telling him to pump it again 
and just repeat that over and over until there's no air. Starting from the furthest caliper from the master cylinder and moving closer. So starting with the right rear, then the left rear, then the right front, then the left front. And then we are also using DOT 5.1, which has a lot higher boiling point, so it'll hold better under heavy braking. Tyler actually lost complete braking pressure because his brake fluid overheated and he was just running regular DOT 3, so this will be a much safer upgrade. You always want to make sure that your fluid doesn't run out because then you can get more air into the system and you're going to be fighting yourself. Tomorrow. So we got the cars filling up now. We're going to hit the tow gate later, but first it's important whenever you're installing new uh, rotors and pads is to bed in the brakes. So you do that by basically heat cycling them. So you heat them up and then you cool them down right after. Um, I'll put the process on screen, but I'm gonna show also how to do that right now after we're done filling up. All right, so first you do four medium stops from 45 to zero, and then you do eight to 10 aggressive stops from 65 to 15, so. Shake. It was shaking sometimes before. Obviously, it's more braking power too. 